we welcome new members. Mike and Kelly, thank you guys for um, coming. There's there's quite um, an agenda, and I know between what's going on with me and um, what's going on with you, and I don't know how long we're gonna make it tonight. So I did have a couple things that um, we could table. Um, so the first thing we need to do, right, was approve minutes. Did everybody that is here have a chance to do that? I know Denise sent um, Celia a, uh, edit for an me. edit. And besides that, I um, do we do that individually by um, date, or can we do the whole group? You can do the whole group. group. The group. Your motion. Well, I think, and there was one, is 610 was really 611. Is that true, Celia? I kind of saw that on my... Did you send it out on the, maybe you sent it out on the, on the 11th. I have it as 611. Should okay. it be 610 or 611? Well, I don't know. I had it. Okay. It probably, I will check matter. the date. I don't remember which one was there. Um, so, does, um, so for minutes on 610, 915, 916, and 1015, is there any discussion with? Minutes, or shall we approve them as is? Do I say that right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'm okay with them. So okay. I think we are all. We all, all in set. favor of approval? So, uh, by motion or by consensus? Well, it's just the three of us that can consent to oh, yeah. what we're talking about. Because <laughs> so not here yet. yet. Yeah. Um, I am working on, there's a few of them, um, I'm working on the May 29th right now. They have many more. I think there are, um, I did, I was watching it. Five. I was just okay, thinking. We need to really get those done before 2019 ends. Yep. Okay. That's just my point. Okay. Shorten them, Celia. Yeah. Shorten them. <laughs> Minutes can be really brief. Just as yeah. brief as, you know. Well, the point is. skip over number two. I think we should start with the smaller items. So number three, um, update walking policy. Um, so that's why I passed this out to everybody here. Um, hey, look at you. You brought yours. Um, so we've had a couple, just to bring everybody up to speed with this, um, uh, our first year we did not might have been the first two years. We did not have any walk. You had to be brought in and check, um, signed in and out by a parent to come to Camp Raleigh. So we had a couple of parents who had asked individually if they could have their kids who live close to the school sign in and out. This form we had just for teen camp because um, the, anybody really who wanted to be signed in and out by themselves could in teen camp as long as their parents agreed. So um, I don't know if we want to look at this policy as a grade sort of thing. I think if, if there is no teen camp, which is what the consensus is, um, then we might have, I think before we had teen camp, our camp only was K through eight. I know we had it open K through eight, or sorry, you have to be entering the first grade. Um, so do we want to make a stipulation that parents can fill this out um, for, for a certain age kid or for, like kind of my thought would be any child going into sixth, seventh, or eighth can sign themselves in or out. That would be kind of my feeling. And what about siblings? So I would say no to that. I don't, um, so that's a great question. Um, <laughs> that's a good question. I think there has to be definitely, it has to be older to be able to break that. I was thinking five, six, seven, eight. I would say to. just entering sixth grade. Yeah. I think, you know, kids who are just entering the fifth grade, I still find, you know, that's, yeah, I don't that's know if I want them responsible for yeah. checking in and out. So yeah. that would be, that would be my feeling. Um, and from what I remember from this year, no 
going to one fifth grader, and then the rest were going into sixth, seventh, or eighth that requested the walking meter. We had we had one going into the fifth grade. I thought I thought it was he was going into the sixth grade. Maybe he was going into the sixth. Uh, there yeah. were two that were going into the sixth grade. Yeah, okay. If, if that's the case. Yeah. I don't. I wasn't clear if one was going into fifth grade or going into sixth grade. I think we always had three going up in that way. And I. I would, I would think, um, I don't know if we want to put a stipulation in there about distance from school. I don't know, Lori, you would know, would you know school policy with that? Like, I don't know. I know Marsh would drop off buses here and they walk away home, right? Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only drop off? Yeah, it's a legion, yeah. Yeah. They had to fight for that. Yeah. Um, that's a good point. And those are sixth graders. But yeah, I think to, to Kelly's question, I don't. I think if there's a younger sibling involved, they, they need to be. Those kids need to be picked up. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we can. Yeah. I wouldn't feel comfortable sending home a, you know, a sixth grader with a first grader. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, I guess I suppose it's different if they live across the street. But right. But then the the parent can take their turn. Right. Anything right. is open to discussion. But I say if you're going to stick to a general rule of thumb, then I think that we need to keep erring on the side of caution. I agree. Yeah. So, um, so are we good with, like, are we okay? Because, you know, we went for a little while with, you know, our first year, we were like, there's no walkers, absolutely mm -hmm. not. Um, I, I feel comfortable allowing walkers. Um, so I don't know, do we have, like, a, I don't know, a mile? Do we do, do, we do that? Are we just What's the leave? bus? I don't, that's what I was wondering. I think the bus rule is um, not really so much a rule because they do pick up people. Like, I thought it was a like mile. Really like, really close, don't like, they? They have to pick you up if you're outside of a mile, but I think they do pick you up even in. if you're within the mile. Yes, but it's not everybody. through our town. That's well, and maybe that's issue. why. But it is a whole issue because it? Okay. most of us don't live. It used to be two miles. Yeah. And most of us do not live within the two mile radius, but Silver doesn't have. Uh, sidewalk most Pine doesn't have yeah. sidewalks. You know, all of these side streets don't have sidewalks. So that's huh. I believe why that they used to from my school board days. I yeah. believe that's why that they yeah. used I to was, do that. I was always told that Scottsdale was picked up because the empty bus was bus. <laughs> you know, bus with not very many kids went by, so they picked them up. Oh well that could be. I don't know. That's what you're yeah. yeah. I yeah. Know. But I find it interesting, like my kids the Washington Street doesn't have a sidewalk. Um my kids still have to walk mm. to, to here, town. Mm. But until recently, there was no crosswalk and no sidewalk across the street in front of, from like the corner to the post office. So they would either have to cross where there was no crosswalk or walk where there was no sidewalk. And I think that's because the bus always has trouble in these small downtown yeah. streets that it couldn't go everywhere downtown. Go to work. I don't think you can go to Pine. I, I don't think that you can make that turn. Because I don't think they don't get picked up. They Pine? walk. Pine? Right? Is that oh, they walk down, not silver. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I didn't know that they didn't pick them up on Pine. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I, I agree. I don't think so. Mm. Yeah, one of my friends, she walks her kids up and she walks on. Well, clearly we can't follow the school rules. No, <laughs> we have to follow what we feel is the the least yes. dangerous. Right. Um, so, I mean, parents are going to come and challenge it if they really feel passionate about it, and then it's on their hands what they're finding it. Um, I mean, I wouldn't want someone who's on um, Rollins Road or right. riding by Oak be walking home right. or riding a bike. Um, right. But if it's within, you know, like say from the fire station down or this way, that will, you know. So should we, I don't know. Or to put that on there, or just you know, be like, yeah. oh, this is a generic kind of. I think it should be generic, and if they want to, they'll say something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So don't have a stipulation of, of distance from yeah. the school or anything like that. Yeah. No, but I do think we need to see age. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so. Um, <laughs> yes. A couple of thoughts. If you put in the distance, yeah. then you're kind of obligating yourself to see how it checks into that distance. Like who's going to measure the mile and make sure that you're within it or not? Mm -hmm. um, but also, if somebody lives on Kelwin, 
is somebody going to like wonder with the parents? Is somebody going to connect those dots and say, do you live on Kelwin? How are you walking home? Yeah. Um, what, what is our level of responsibility to see what makes sense about that? So I'm just, that's just a, a question. Um, the other question is, how are we documenting this? Is this going in the camper handbook? Is that how, how are we? I think what we talked about before um, this was actually having this on our sports engine registration. Because I think whatever stipulations you put to it, such as ages, need to be there too. Yeah. Um, so maybe it's worth speaking to in the parent handbook or in the, in the it, will, it would need to be in both, I would, mm -hmm. I would, I would say. And, well, it, yeah, it's in oh, both, so the staff know how to administer yeah. it and the, and the families know what their options are. Um, I would say put it in the parent handbook because we've seen parents, are, there's a spot on the sports engine where parents can put pickup, and we've already seen last year one parent say, nothing, my child will be walking, and it was a yeah. younger child. Yeah. And that was something that we could pick up on. If it's in the parent handbook, they can sign it, return it the first day of camp, because most likely they're going to be bringing their child to the first day of camp anyway. Um, I would suggest that the staff handbook um, talks about the exceptions are. How are the exceptions handled? Is that up to the select board? Is it up to me? Is it up to this committee? Is it up to the rec director? But we ought to be prepared for how we're handling those. Yeah. Can it? I mean, I know we still had some paper, right? Registrations. So do we say that this has to be attached? It either has to be filled out in the sports engine or attached to the registration because it has to be turned in before camp begins. I think it would be helpful to see them before camp begins so that you can have a conversation and have time to review, you know, between the busy, busy first day and the second day when the kid is supposed to walk home. You know, do you have enough time to evaluate these and see that you, they make sense and that people, that the counselors are aware of who in the group is allowed to walk? Like, do, do you really, you don't have it set up, like, I guess, so people don't know what they're doing. That would be just my thought, is that. You also have to make sure that they know that they, they cannot go home at lunch because it's different oh, yeah. to and from yeah. the program. Well, to and from is ambiguous. Though. Well, I'm, so, I'm so talking to us in general, too. It's in the yeah. morning and at night, and that's, that is it. They can't they leave any time. They cannot right. come and go as Because once upon a time it was a come and go. Right, right. So we want to make sure that that's clear, that it's just. Yeah. So I would say with the registration packet, and yeah. that it says in the in the parent camper handbook that it's not a come and go. Mm -hmm. um, can I make a motion that we accept the walking waiver um, for grades five through eight, adjusting the wording to take up the date and pink camp?
camp kids, which we got back early in the week or whatever. Yeah. So it was, yeah. I was just, just take that all off. Yeah. I take that off completely. It is, it is a big deal. Yeah. When they come and when they leave, it's, it's going out. I agree. Well, <coughs> sorry, so they wasn't No, that's okay. <laughs> You're just making a motion that we allow it, but we can talk about the form in a later date. It doesn't have to be part of your motion at all then. I mean, if it's something that, you know, that we can fix. Do I need a second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any names? Aye. Um, so I just want to mention that we're talking about changes and such, and they're documented in the minutes. Um, but when we talked about job descriptions for people on the committee, um, that's just, I think, going to be another job is to go back through the minutes for, um, all the way through tonight, you know, and, and you know until whenever this process ends, um, to implement these decisions. Or else we need some way for somebody to be in charge of remembering that and making sure it's reflected in the, the appropriate handbooks in the appropriate way, is my understanding. So it's one thing to make the decision, and that's great. Somebody, you know, it's just, we've got to make sure that these things happen and that we're not losing sight of them. Yeah, I think we should definitely put it in the handbook as well as on the website so that so we need to make sure that that's noted that those two locations for sure. Well, this has, this is, this one's on the town of Rollinsford. Um, I don't know if you still mean to have that. You mean on the, yeah. Um, like if it's within the, I think we, uh, for some reason we, do you remember why we needed to do that on town of Rollinsford? Well, and I think it was because it was on the fly because it, it was wasn't part of the registration right. packet, so there was no way to know that it was right. So it doesn't. So the the new one doesn't necessarily have to be that. I don't right? think it's that at all. Like right. It, it can even be just a, like a tear off sheet from another page of the registration okay. packet. I think as long as it's clear who the child is and that the parent signed it. Yeah. Yeah. I just think that we also need to make sure we identify ourselves. And I and think we all got it. From but. summer's work, and they had it on the top of theirs too to signify that it was their program. But um, if it's all within, well, but if it's all within the camp programming, I don't. There's no. It is if it's in the registration packet, then it's okay. from the registration packet. I would yeah. say, and then everybody knows it's an option, and everybody already just read, or or is getting the handbook. They, okay. So do they get the handbook when they get the registration packet? And probably not. No, because they have to register first. Right. So, so that's just an interesting thing to think about. They're filling this out before they've read the stipulations in the handbook. But the stipulations are going to be on this. Yeah, so the stipulations so are going to be reflected on Yeah, they should be on here and not grade. just in the handbooks. Yes. yes. And for arrived morning and we don't want them traveling. Well, yeah, right. so they need to know what they're signing off on. They're signing yeah. off on the age of the kid and that it's only, um, not back and forth, but only. Right. It's when they well, arrive in the morning and when they leave at night is when they can go. And if it's anything other than that, then the parent has to come and get them. So they can sign themselves in in the morning. This is, so maybe it's not even just a drop off. Ride to from, okay. Ride to from is, is once, once in the day. Right. And if it has to, if it, they have a 12 o'clock appointment and they have to leave, then a parent has to come and get them. Right. So I think we can work on language. It's yeah. just about intent of age range and yeah, let's, beginning um, and end. I'll, I'll work on the, the language of it with you. Okay. And then we can bring it back to the next meeting. Okay. okay. That's good with everyone? Okay. Um, and Caroline, to your comment about motion policy changes and stuff like that, that was something that I was thinking about doing too as I was going through the minutes because the main minutes that I, I'm working on right now, we've changed the teen camp from being 12, the age cutoff of 12 to 12 years old by May 31st or entering grade 7. So. We don't have to worry about transferring because the town hasn't made Well, she's trying to, do you have a question about the minutes? No, I'm just saying that motion is in there for future reference. And I know. But now it's been canceled, so it's kind of moot, but you still have to put it in the minutes because that's what was. Yes. 
but I'm saying if it were to come back in the future, it's there as a reference tool. Well, right, just like what you just did is now going to be reflected in these minutes. We just have to make sure that we look back and somebody's really reading thoroughly through all the minutes to make sure that we're implementing all these decisions into all the appropriate policies and handbooks and whatnot. Right, but seeing that the program has ceased, anything that happens, if it ever comes back, Will be a program all on its own and be right, rewritten. So it's not you don't have to worry about what you approved backwards because it's stop it's stopping. So if you're going to bring it back, you're going to reinstitute it. You're going to have the rules, and that's going to overdo what you you originally voted for. So so there's not the need for that higher level of documentation. Right. You still need to get the gist of the meeting and the motions and whatnot, but don't feel like you have to get the nitty gritty because she's quite right that the board and the committee are going to change and if it comes back it'll be likely brand new again. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm one of those people that digs into the research to find out all the information that has been in the past and what has worked successfully and what is not and what other people have done and led by example. So for me, it's good to have it and I understand that the select board is not going through with the teen camp this year, but I also see that it's good to have it in the record for sure. future reference. You have that You have to have the records written how they were voted on. Right. I'm just saying, we don't have to worry about going backwards and looking at it if we start the program again, because it's a whole new program that will be rewritten then. So, Celia, so you're quite right. Have that correct. So you're quite right that you know the record. The point of the record is for people to understand what happened at that meeting. And people such as yourselves absolutely do go back into previous meetings to minutes to find out what happened and what was going on at that time. But um, it's still only a reflection of what happened at that meeting. So whatever was successful or not successful about it isn't necessarily reflected in the minutes anyway if it wasn't discussed. So. I, I, that's that's the only reason why I said that. So just, you know, as a as a um, as a way to be judicious about your time because there are still a number of minutes that are out there. It's just a way to be um, less specific. You know, you can get generalities. You know, it, you get that discretion as a minute taker to you know give what level of, of detail according to whatever happened at the meeting. <coughs> And that was Celia that was bringing up your, the movie license, the, what we've been dealing with movie. So I have one more question before we yep. go on. So if we put this walking policy into the registration packet, will it no longer go before the select board? Because the, policy, the practice has been going before the select board. <coughs> what won't go through the select board? Anyway? People used to have to go to the board to say, can my kid uh, 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 uh. To me, that it would be the only thing that would be necessary, right, for the select board is if somebody, I would assume, wanted somebody younger to do that, and it or would be a, yeah. it would be a score or a sibling it would be a special occasion. So that would yeah, be my I assumption, see, I right? Your reason for it to go to the select right. board, unless it's an exception to the to this whole, new this whole rule, right? And it would have to they have to come plead their case to us, right? But just the regular following every single. Do you want to 
make someone go through and make sure that all the addresses qualify for whatever you put down as a, you know, what, what exactly are the boundaries of the village district, for example? Well, you I'm know? just saying General John and down the village would be, in Is my opinion, the, the, the furthest I, I would want to. I think, Lori, like what you're saying is, okay, if somebody puts down Carolyn and then, and then says that their, their kids walk in, that would be, yeah, that would be me making a phone call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, um. <laughs> yeah, we don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can't really walk in six miles home and what's going on with that, you know? So we don't have, we haven't had a lot of walkers. Well, that's because it's been, you know what I mean? So, yeah. and, and we, why else, Celia, did I call somebody? Oh, so it was a couple a, people a couple times last year. And it was a why, but. sibling situation when they had an older child and they were going to walk with their third or fourth grade sibling that had medication. It was just sort of about the medication getting back. I don't know. I, I have, you know, I think whoever, you know, as a rec director and myself, you know, I have no problem making that phone call to say, and I don't think there's going to be 30 of them. I'm just thinking <laughs> okay, I live right by Kelvin, I can't imagine them. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can see them going across the woods. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can take the exceptions to what we consider reasonable yes. and, and contact. And, yeah, and yeah. just, you know, just be like, um, okay, you're talking about crossing round, you know, crossing Route 4 to Bear Road or whatever. Yeah, like crossing know. multiple towns at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. So does that... Well, there we go. You can give us the red flag. So, are we putting on a distance? I no. don't think so. I don't think it creates too many people asking questions yeah. about distance or anything. <laughs> One would hope that common sense would be right. Uh -huh. Most mm -hmm. cases would help. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Movie. Movies. Let's show movies. Um, the PTO voted. Um, on Wednesday of last week, um, to s come in with a max of two hundred and fifty dollars to split the movie license for one year. The movie license would be based at the school, and through Movie USA, um, it would be five hundred dollars, four ninety five, so roughly five hundred dollars for the year, and it's tied to the school. It has to be shown at the school. And that's up to a max of 300 people. Um, and they provide promotional materials, like if we wanted to do a movie night or something, they'll send us posters and tickets and stuff like that. We can use it as a fundraiser, so we can sell popcorn and drinks and be able to use it. And they have a list of several different um, companies that they work with, from Disney to and well, it's no longer Fox, but um, Disney, Fox, and a bunch of other places that we could um, utilize for getting the movies from. And we can either live stream it through them, they would send us a link to live stream it, or they could send us a DVD. Does it, does it take um, this license? a movie like or I mean I, I understand like the if they're going to set up the tickets and all that kind of thing but if all of a sudden it starts to rain in the afternoon like do we have to wait on that to show a movie in the school you, know? you can't show your own movie or only if it's one of those producers yeah. I think is what she's saying so the movie license is for you know whatever production companies, but if you want to show Universal Film, and Universal isn't included even though you own it, mm -hmm. no, you don't have a Universal license. But they have, I mean, Disney is one of them, so if, I mean, if you had a so you pile have of Disney videos there, you could just show that. can you show your own, do you know? Or is that a restriction? I, I think you can, but um, the gentleman sent the whole paperwork to the rec committee um, email address. Um, and I'm trying to figure out if we need to give them notice saying we're going to do it. I don't think we need to because it says you can, the school can buy into it using Title I funds and use it for rainy days. 
like if you have a, an indoor recess, mm -hmm. they could put on a film or a TV show for indoor recess, mm -hmm. and you can't really get advance notice. Right. So for that's you might be able to use your own or live stream it, one right. or the other. So yeah. probably we need to ask that question if it's yeah. something that we can use our own as long as you're under the, all of those categories that they, they listed you like 10 or 15 category of um, production companies. So I'm sure that we could come up with some tape to have on hand that fit in those categories. Yeah. You know, so, um, but yeah, it might be worth asking that question for confirmation. Um, just the Swank movie licensing yes. video that you have sent us. Yes. It does not provide a copy of the physical movie. Oh, it doesn't. Content. Okay. However, you may buy, borrow, or rent physical copies of the movie or stream movies from any legal source. They do not provide it. Well, I had to back with another. So then oh, so you we still have to have a Netflix own. account or, or, or if rent a movie cable or something. Here, you yeah. can stream something and show it. It says the license authorizes unlimited movie showings by anyone in the school board in, in the school building, regardless of whether or not they are affiliated with the school. So it's in or outside on school property, right? Yeah. Can you share it? It's yeah. school grounds, I thought it was. Because if you wanted to do a, a summer outdoor movie type thing, you could do that, I would assume. When they took my information, they asked if it was going to be inside or outside, and they based it on the inside, uh, so I will confirm yeah. that it can be they shown outside. It may be on school property, but it may be outside. outside. on school yeah. property. Yeah. That's the way to me, but, yeah. oh. And they base it on the student this body, thing. so we are limited to, this license covers up to 300 people. So it, that's based on 150 kids, each with like a friend or parent. So this is a little, it, it doesn't, movie showings must take place inside the school building. Coverage does not include outdoor events or showings off campus. Oh, interesting. That's too bad. That would be a nice thing for summertime. This one is what it's the four ninety five for the four hundred and ninety five for one year. And the PTO has agreed to do half do half and we would fill out the paperwork and sign it and then send in two checks, one from the PTO and one from the town of Rollins, which cover <coughs> our half. So do we need to um, we need to make a motion if we're gonna spend the money and we need to determine where we're taking the money from. Like, are we doing it in this year's budget, or are we doing it in next year's calendar? Well, this year there's no money left. Right? Well, is there? It's a calendar year, isn't it? Or like, how does it work? How does the license? It takes a couple of weeks from setup. I think you said two to three weeks from setup to get it done. The quote of four ninety five is good for ninety days from the day it was given to us, which was in October. So it gets us through the end of the year, and. Um, it would be one calendar year from the date of setup. So then, if you the ninety, what is the ninety days? The ninety days is the quote guarantee. Oh, the so price of the price. Off. Okay. Yeah, it said it actually says Caroline in here that you can pick your start date. The okay. start date for the license is yours to select. But but there's no time for rec. You know, the there's the that we have to there's do. the winter rec line that we could possibly use um, to get that's, it started. That's basketball. Though. I mean, I don't know why we can't just start in January. I, the PTO was talking about doing a movie night. I don't know, it, they wouldn't do it until January either because they canceled their December thing because it was just too busy for family. I don't know, you can make, you, you, can you write a check for 2020, not until after the budget's been passed? Um, no, well before the budget's passed, but not until next year. So, yeah. um, okay. it's not that much money. Yeah. It, you know, you could, you could, I mean, if that's the stipulation of the matching funds from the PTO, then. But they're not going to do it until January either, so. So then I would say, let's just get the form signed and not send them in until January 1st. 
Yeah, if it doesn't have to happen this year, I would say let's not do it this year, and it simplifies the money. Mm -hmm. So would we make a motion to suspend that money for January 1st? Or do we table doing that motion? I think it's worth coming up with a decision in some regards so that you can respond to the PTO that you're <coughs> intending to accept the offer or not? Well, you know, winter rec is only to December 31st anyway. <coughs> All of the funds. All of the ready. funds for the, until December 31st. Right. So if we don't spend the funds, we could potentially take it out of that Well, and, and write a check to have it start for January 1st. Or December 15th or whenever yeah. you want it to start. The other thing is, um, senior didn't do very much this year, so you can, t you know, there's one small reimbursement um, from the coffee hour, and does it get yours in? No, I put mine in it. <laughs> okay, so well, that's okay. you know, clearly there's not the full, you know, maybe there's two hundred dollars, but there's a little bit of money, perhaps, depending on the goals of this committee through December. But there's a little bit of money in senior. Okay, but uh, but rec, uh, basketball is mostly like January to like March, right? Right. So what we did last year was we used. We, we put in for one tournament mm -hmm. before because so we could use the money. Mm -hmm. So I would assume that um, I'd have to look at our numbers again, but mm -hmm. we collected at $350, so I know we're competitively close. I play with. <laughs> there's um, only one or $200, not even. Um, th there's a very small amount that came out of the $1,100 mm -hmm. that was yeah. budgeted. Yeah. So we probably could do it. I, I think you but really I still would. I would still do it for January to December, though. Even if you place the order and say you want to be starting in January to December, that, uh, that's what I would do it. But if we can fund Especially it, if you know nobody's going to use it, right? December. If you're not going to use it, I mean, and we're the not going to use it. Yeah. The PTO is um, the fourth senior tournament. Okay. 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 January first. Is it just makes it easier too. Well, it saves you money next year, mm -hmm. except that next year you have to do it again mm -hmm. and find the money for, for renewal. Mm -hmm. So it's all about where you want the money to come from. Yeah. When you want the money. Mm -hmm. So are there new members here? You still have to figure out all these contracts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a little long. I, I just have one quick question. I'm going to derail it. Yeah. Is there an option to like add an outside? Because I don't know. The outside movie thing is pretty awesome. I think that's wicked awesome. cool for fun, yeah. like for people I didn't know summer. if it's like four ninety five was the base level, but if you want to chip in or yeah. whatever, uh, I, I don't know. Can you ask them? Yeah. How much more? Tell them that we have large value. Especially if you have some that type of so much earning you can make with snacks or well, right. You could also pay five bucks per family or whatever mm -hmm. something. I don't know. Activity fee. Something like that. I don't know. There's not a lot to do with kids and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. And I know other communities do yeah. like. Actually, we were looking into doing it, and I think Portsmouth and Huntington Beach do it, and that's just nobody wants to drive that far on a Monday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I know the town nice. broken does it on Thursday nights. Mm -hmm. Well, we do too. With like Portsmouth, uh, is it? Did you say that at Prescott, Prescott Park yeah. they have like outdoor movie nights? They like, do, but I mean, I'm just thinking like I have a ten year old and seven year olds, and trying to get out of Portsmouth after mm -hmm. their pa up past the bedtimes is no thank you. So just mm -hmm. here, I don't know. So see, I think just yeah, you, that might be have to be a phone call. Just I'm also willing to help out, so it doesn't all fall on me too. But yeah, but this town is on the same grounds as the school. Yeah. So I don't really understand. I mean, not to mention they're not having it in another place in town, but it's on the same grounds as the school. Yeah. And think it's the earning think potential because more people like you're completing. You know, it's a different opportunity. So um, you, might you can fit more people and here. charge more money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to make more money because you can have more people. You might draw more. But if we more still keep it to 300, that's true. Yeah, that's yeah. A, it's a talking point. You know, you can try to negotiate with them. But my guess is they have set fees for mm -hmm. whatever the options are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we don't have parking for free. Was it? Yeah, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. There's no box you can check that says outdoor use 
also. <laughs> well, I would be able to find out, like, maybe we hope that Smith can either get, or not, I know they have more money, but. But the library also yeah. has a license, I found out, too, um, a patron donated one to the library, so the library has one to do the movie thing. Which might be cool for seniors, by the way, to in the community room to show something that seniors might want to. You know. So, I guess we need a motion if we're using the third. Um, or do we want to include? I see you brought some. I did. I um. I asked my husband to oh grab a, what he thought was a decent projector for under six hundred dollars. So. This is what he came up with. So Denise, the other thing is, is that we have the five hundred and eighty dollars from C and J that they gave us right. for the movie projector and screen. Um, what is that one? It's supposed to be in your budget. Well, so it was a donation, right? For you a still, purpose. Right. For yeah. a purpose, so you have to honor the purpose. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it was budgeted or not budgeted, and where you're at with budget, but you still have to find budget money to spend. But the revenue came in. But the revenue came in. Okay. And we spent $920 of it on two t -shirts. shirts. Okay, so how much do you have left? 580 because okay. it was 1500 Okay. So that 580 we were going to use to buy a screen and a projector. So I guess in my head we need two motions. One to buy the movie license with a projected date where the money's coming from. And then second motion to spend the money on the projector and or screen. Is and that correct? Is, is there going to be, how much are these things? This is 500, so this was a decent one. Just screen. for the uh, projector, right? Yeah, and I, and I didn't know if we really needed, we've had use in the school with the whiteboards. Yep, the smart boards. So I kind of didn't really look too much for a screen, I think. Can you just right. use the smart board if, if you're going to use the yeah. smart board for a projector? Can you stream it to the smart board? Yes, as long as you have the computer. And Rich gave the uh, gave um, Melanie a computer she uses mm -hmm. for actual. And PTO would have access to the computer. So if you find out how much the outdoor license costs, and that you want maybe. to do that, then maybe a projector, if you're going to do it outside, but maybe you don't need a projector or a screen if you're going to do them inside, inside except that you're limited to, well, really all the rooms probably have that now, so. But there's, there's one on the stage, so you can just turn it to the gym and mm -hmm. project, or show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that brings us back to the C&J donation, which has a stipulation on what to spend it on. Um, so then which became that? about the movie. <laughs> well, it was for T-shirts. Yeah. So yeah, it was written for the T-shirts and the movie. So. And the movie license and equipment, which we took the movie license off the table when they didn't provide us with their donation until after the season. So you could use C and J money for the license, which means you could use C and J money potentially to make up the difference with the outdoor license, depending on what it costs, potentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then just buy a projector, possibly for outdoors, if you want to do that. Mm -hmm. But maybe we don't need a screen, although if you're outside, you, you need a screen. Like maybe like a huge piece of canvas that you can like hang from the roof or something. Um, I don't know, but. Maybe um, you should just go for the inside this year and see how it goes and see, and then talk about doing an outside and put it in the budget for next year. Then we just have to account for those funds from C&J. But if it goes towards the license, and. Yeah, you still have money left over, unless you do the outdoor, which is okay. Mm -hmm. You can find out how much it is anyway. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth knowing how mm -hmm. much it is because then you can budget for it for, the, you know, for another time. But if, it's, but if it's 500, what did you say 500 million? 500 million. Because that will cover a project, right? project, yeah, that's how much money. Right, but they said you can use Netflix or whatever, so somebody is paying for that net, net, Netflix net, or a disc or, or whatever yes. it's coming from. 
So maybe you either accumulate, you buy 10 CDs of things that rec would, kids would watch, you know, or a Netflix account. I don't know how that all works, because one son pays for it, and I have to do this. <laughs> so, but do you know what I mean? Like, that would have to be part of it, or I'm using my account for rec to be showing me. So you're saying rec has to set up an account in their name. Yeah, well, they, they, they need a source of movies. They mm -hmm. need to, you, you, yeah. Well, who did it last year? Who had somebody, one of the kids had it. I would think that we would want a specific rec account that we would have age appropriate movies on because we're saying we're only showing PG and G and the parents are signing off on that in their parent registration book. And if we have an account, then they can just add in ones that they use. And as new ones come out, they can add them and then they're not having to sort through their own personal films to get to the ones that the kids want. No, I mean, you could take the subscription to Netflix or something in, in terms of recs, which come out of a donation, because that's the that's right. material. You just send it, set it up as a turnaround for them for that. And most of the laptops at school don't take discs anyway. That's true. Yeah, that's true. So I, I wonder if you can pay them to like do a year subscription to Netflix up front versus having to pay. Isn't it a monthly charge? Technically, but you might be able to do that annually. You could not sure. maybe or pay it up front or what? Like a gift card, you know, you just so you submit your gift card to the account so it just comes off of that gift card. Oh, that's a good point. Maybe we could have a seller and have to do it by month, but it would be nice if we could maybe buy a year subscription. I just don't want to get in a situation where we've got an ongoing monthly charge and not, right. and not canceling it and not knowing what's going on with it. And I agree. I'm just trying to figure out if we can do um, a year per year subscription. And get taken care of now based on that donation. So. <laughs> I'm happy to find that out. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> At least you're going to look into. Yeah, you're going to have to so stipulate which kind of. Netflix paid for Kelly per year. year. <laughs> yeah, can we get a Did yearly membership year? or yeah. subscription? Yeah. yeah. Um, so. And then um, someone needs to look into what is the outdoor license cost to see if that's... If it's available. If it's available, yeah. what is the cost and are, so that we can think <coughs> later about whether or not we're affording that. Because I think that informs whether or not you need a projector because otherwise, I don't know that you need a projector. So I can do that. But my question is, are we meeting again before the end of the year? I don't or think so. We're co okay. <laughs> as long as we're meeting, then um, we can make the motions to spend the money at the next meeting so we won't be carrying over the money. Well, we can't make a motion. You can't make a motion to carry over funds. Um, can't carry over funds. We can't carry over funds. Um, so it just has to happen. We just have to make it happen this year if it's going to happen. So I would say just making sure that it's on the next agenda to make a decision about are you having a full license that includes outdoor or just an indoor license and making sure that we have whatever paperwork in order so that we can pull the trigger on that immediately after that meeting. So they want to know at strength, strength movie license by the end of this week <coughs> for moving ahead. Well, that's just putting pressure on you. Like, yeah, that's not, they don't need to really know. There's nothing expiring not, about, no. I mean, the, out, the yeah. offer's good for 90 days, so there's nothing that's going to happen at the end of the week if they don't know. Yeah. Or if you don't have a response. But I think it's fair to follow up with them and say, we met and talked about it, and this was the outcome of the meeting, that people want to know what is the outdoor license cost. Mm -hmm. And then it puts the ball back in their court, mm -hmm. and then they know that your next meeting's not until whatever day, and they'll, they'll be there ready to follow up. So mm -hmm. we're not going to need a motion to um, set aside funds or anything right now, because we're going to look further into the movie license outdoor, right? Mm -hmm. That is my understanding mm -hmm. of the consensus. Mm -hmm. And the Netflix. So, yeah. And the Netflix, yep. if we can do it. Uh, and the year subscription. Um, but I would say pass on to the PTO if they're meeting in the meantime that the group favors the idea and is supportive but is just trying to figure out the outdoor parts so that they know that this group is still on board and it'll happen. Mm -hmm.
Lori just said that she's gonna. There was a projector at school. No, a screen. A screen. Why would you throw that away? Facebook pages we have. Do you know? There's at least four of them. There's 2017 Camp Raleigh, which we need to take down. 2018 Camp Raleigh. Um, Why well, should they just Camp Raleigh and then there's another which year? And then there's a Camp Raleigh one. Well, 2017 and 2018 they put pictures on. So that was actually so a was private a group. Parent group. The other issue comes out with who is the administrator. We had this issue with the PTO case because that whole PTO left. Mm. So then you were stuck with a page that no one had access to, mm -hmm. which is kind of what I feel where we are right now. So why do we have to have a Facebook page? Well, so it's like good for um, what we're like even for coffee hour that we're trying to do for seniors like you know I put that on my personal page and then I throw it on New Hampshire Rollinsburg New Hampshire happenings but it would be nice to have you know a Rollinsburg recreation Music. page Marsha uses that Marsha's just that's how they contact everybody that's a good way for a lot, a lot of is there already an account using the rec committee email address or no um I don't know I know Dee set one up for Camp Raleigh so it could be that one um and then we have the two years, they didn't set one up for 2019, mm -hmm. so the pictures didn't go out. But I do know there were two or three years we did set them up for parents to look at pictures and stuff. And um, so, um, but like Kelly said, the social hour that I put out via Facebook, um, the announcement came from my personal Facebook page because we don't have a rec book. If I put it out via rec, it's not coming just from me, it's coming from okay. our the group. group. And there are people who reference those pages just for information. So it would so be nice is, to have one. If it's a page, but again, we're kind of like who? If it's a public page, then we can't put any pictures up, right? Anything like that. Right. If it's a private page, then only those people who signed up for it get it. See. Get it. And I think are all the Rollinsford, are all the Rollinsford staff private pages? I think they are. You have to be accepted, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, the Rollinsford New Hampshire mm -hmm. happenings mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, right. you have their own administrators, right. right? And you have to be accepted. I guess that was my question: Is does an administrator have to be one person, or could is it associated by email address? Uh, so if you give us, you know, two or three people would have the login information, or would you know, I mean it would be some for Rollinsford that set up a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. and so, so if somebody wanted to join, it would. Send a reply to email. There is. Um, I'm on two different pages right now, where there is the PT Rollinsford Grade School PTO has one, and then the Rollinsford Historical Committee set one up. That um, there, one person set it up and made other people administrators, mm -hmm. so that two or three of us can go on there and post things and respond, and we get notifications for them, and we can. I can click on my name when I'm posting something, and it can say, post as yourself, post as Rollinsford PTO, post as Rollinsford Historical. But my other concern is, does the select board or somebody from the town need to be an admin on that page too? This is an enormous bag of bees, and it's not his social media policy. Most towns have a social media policy, and for good reason. So I just want to that out there. Cause, um, well, I mean, because stuff like so, what I get, I see, I already see like future postings, like registration. You know, yeah. we opening registration, whatever it is, and you can send it to March first. Parents, and that's great. They know, mm -hmm. or you know, like it's going to rain on Friday, and so we're changing the plan, or you know, that there are reasons to. Mm -hmm. I mean. Every one of our departments has a Facebook page. Um, where without a policy. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> However, they all have positions. Uh, they all have 
they're, they're employees. Full -time, they're employees. Yeah. Where this is not, it, we are not employees. Right. Right? Or, well, I know you are, but that's, you know what I'm saying? So it's a little different. And we do have to have a meeting. I know that it makes that a priority, please. Give <laughs> <laughs> to the board. Um, but yeah, you do have to have some control about who has access and who doesn't, for sure, as an administrator, and what goes on it. So I don't know. I don't know. I've never been on the own. I didn't even know we had Facebook pages, so that's interesting. I didn't even know about that. <laughs> but that. But those were, pri I believe those were private. private so so it was after camp started that we mm -hmm. that invited parents to them. Like many classroom teachers have a Facebook yeah. page. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they're private. And they, so they do it every year mm -hmm. just for that, and they do a new one every year. I see. So that, you know, Tia was there last year. Mm -hmm. Well, that was only for that. But anyway, yeah. just saying, <laughs> Tia was there, you know, last year, so Kelly had that invite. But if she didn't have kids in in that classroom this year, mm -hmm. she wouldn't be able to see. She wouldn't be, in those yeah. she wouldn't be invited. Yeah. No. Would, it's just for that. Do you have to have that kind of restriction for sure? But so, just but we also want to use it as a marketing news. tool. Yeah, marketing. Well, even a marketing tool too. Well, and whose job is it to um, decide to invite people or accept people? If that had to be administrator, yeah. whoever the administrator. Well, well that's. I guess what I mean is that it's another in the program. Mm -hmm. The administrator would have to know that information as well. Yeah. So ideally, I s would see. You know, and we can get to that part coming up here, director. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I think that there may be a need to. for one that's the committee putting out announcements and stuff, and then the rec director like would oversee camp Raleigh the, News would oversee the camp one, which is not, and then camp members. Yeah. But the uh, that uh, it, talking about administrators makes me think that we did not set up the camp ones that are private from 2017 and 2018. How do we delete them? That was what we ran into mm -hmm. with the PTO. Did Brittany set them? I bet she did. She set up As the, the camp, camp director. And I don't know who did the one the year before. I think she did too. I think she did that year. She did that year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so, So is that how it works? Does that the new administrator have to change it to a to the old administrator needs to change it to the new administrator? Is that, is that what they did for PTO? They well, ended up taking building a new one and asking Facebook to take down the old one because it was inactive. Yeah. But if, if it's a closed group, you don't want to invite. You know, you just don't want to blanketly invite all of those parents to the new group no. when you don't know. They would only be registered people who would have access. So, so all the old ones are all old and we don't need to care except that they're cluttery and maybe yeah. confusing to people, I suppose. But So two of them are closed groups for camp only. And one of them was a Camp Raleigh one run by Dean Meepock, who was on this committee, who was using it to put out announcements. Registration is open. That was a public group. Uh, X number of days until registration closes and stuff like that. So there is one that's public that we would just have to ask D to make somebody an administrator on or make the new rec director the administrator and change it from just Camp Raleigh, maybe, to Rollins for Rec, so it covers the senior program. Mm -hmm. And changing a name on a page, I don't think it's going to be as difficult, and an administrator is not going to be as difficult as creating a whole new page or something like that. I see your point that I think there is a benefit to having one for the committee and then a separate one for families per year. Um, you know, I can look at what I have for a social media policy and see, you know, what, what they suggest about these things. It's just complicated by the fact that this is a volunteer group and the volunteer group changes all the time. They're not so I'm not even sure that that really covers it. But I suppose the rec director, if there's consistency in the rec director, at least that helps. Mm -hmm. 
and they can post as a recreation director, and they don't have to be a, a name even. Mm -hmm. They could just right. be recreation director posting on the recreation page, I right. suppose. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, you don't have to use their, their personal Well, because I would hope that they wouldn't use anything that correlates back to them personally. Mm -hmm. And when I post for the PTO <coughs> or for the Ronsford Historical Committee, it says, like, Ronsford Historical, if, if it's not me, it'll say, Ronsford Historical Committee posted such and such an event at the Wentworth House. But if I'm an administrator on there, it tells me Celia Leopold posted it or um, Chris Benedetto posted it. It tells you which one of the administrators posted it. So as co-administrators, you can see who's posting what on your page. Double checking. So maybe, should I, should I bother? To get that info from Dean's to switch that over, or do you guys think? think it's I think it's worthy. worthwhile mm -hmm. because it doesn't it's mean. It's better than having another one out there. Yeah. Well, and it doesn't. That doesn't mean that there needs to be a decision with what to do with it. You just at least have the power to do something if mm -hmm. we're deciding to do something. Would you um, take on the assignment? Because you work with Jean. I can ask her. Right. Yeah. to a year, we don't really. I just want to make sure we get all the pictures off. But I would probably. Do I that. I got a bunch of them downloaded onto the drive. <laughs> I was in the process of downloading them all onto the drive. Okay. Um, all right. The first well, thank you. No, thank you. It was nice to meet everybody. Yes, thank you. Is, um, you before you leave, is there a day out of the week that isn't a good day? We seem to be meeting mostly on Tuesdays. Yeah, I think it's consistent. Mondays and Tuesdays, my husband wants to double so I have to get a babysitter, but um, I can probably usually find a neighbor to okay. do that. So, is there, is there a day that is fabulous and wonderful for a meeting for you? Wednesday or Thursday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine. I don't, I don't want to yeah. change anything Just off the boat. Wednesday is usually the budget night. Right. And but they can, stuff for the rest of the year is booked. But, you know. But they can be in the other room. Oh, that's true. That's true. But, yes, but the month there might just be a couple of little people out in the hallway that are happy to yell at every once in a while. Oh, that's what happens. We're all used to that. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you all so much. All thank right. you. Thanks Have a great back. evening. You too. Thank you. responsibility to give them a program and then the money that was in the team budget will give them extra time to do things throughout the year to that, I mean that's I had a different process. vision in my head that we were hiring somebody for a couple of hours a week to work and then we were hiring them to oversee the camp Raleigh director and well, why not two directors yes I think it'd be, I mean, it'd be more money yeah. for that one person than having a little bit of money for this person, a little bit of money for that yeah. person to make it. So the person become a town employee at that point then? Is a town, it would, yeah, I mean the rec director 
is a ton of pay already mm -hmm. when you're hiring if you're just a boot camp Raleigh. So having that person is just going to increase that person's time to be able to do more things than just so that, Raleigh. So that person has to report to the select board then? Yes. Yeah. As all, all employees or under the direction of the select board. And there was a question for me just about funding because if team camp is gone, mm -hmm. um, so that was over because we brought in over eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So it is is that money by the board looked at? Are we are, is that town money, or is that money that the rec program is going to have to pick up the slack for? Well, that offset. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. So you're losing eight thousand dollars worth of income. But um, the program has eight thousand dollars. Well, they covered. The, they came. Well, up, right. They so came right above. So whatever was over, it applied to Raleigh because Raleigh hasn't been making the progress. Well, the net point is that the rec director doesn't have any offsetting revenue. I right. Think. So. No, the rec. And we. Well, yes. as it is right now, with the with like two different budgets that way. So I think what you're trying to drive at is. Um, is it completely unsupported by offsetting revenue, or what? It, or are you completely restructuring um, the um, registration amounts for Camp Raleigh in hopes of compensating for some of the costs of the rec directors? I don't. Well, the, well, big chunk of the rec director in our thought process as being the same person for the whole position is already compensated in the tuition amount. It would be nice if Raleigh could come level funded, but I think it, that's how I believe I proposed it to the board as well, is that the team would not, would be funded a rec director, part-time rec director, but we were, I don't think we were looking for revenue for that. Well, part. right, it just wasn't really talked about, so. I thought, well, I thought we talked about having, that it's somewhere down, the board talked about somewhere down that we need to start not being 100% revenue neutral, but Raleigh we're still expecting as much as possible. And if there's overages, it can apply to the rec director. Right. I just, right. But I it's not just the, expe the expectation is, yes, whatever we can bring in is great. And I think we need to increase our prices a little bit on Raleigh as well. But it, it wasn't, you have to make all of the money for the rec director and Raleigh. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. But yeah, it really doesn't, and we have to make as much as we possibly can to have Raleigh be revenue neutral. So I'm going to ask a question that might touch a nerve, is that tomorrow night is the night the rank is supposed to go before the select board. Well, well, budget committee. I, budget I put committee. that in an email to Celia, and nobody else knows that the budget committee, or I don't know, I don't think that you told, Was it, so, so the budget committee wanted, my understanding from the last budget committee, is that they were hoping because tomorrow night's agenda was light that if rec were ready and had somebody available they would hear rec tomorrow night but if that doesn't work for people then they're otherwise on the agenda for the following week the mm -hmm. 20th so, so the 20th works for me better than yes. tomorrow night does but so we who do we have other than i know we don't have town um, and the library and the library the only ones that we have right yes so if you're not ready, then don't. don't so do it. my question is, is that my understanding is that we present the budget that we put forth to the select board, but it sounds like the budget that we brought forth, the select board has changed. So what, what do we present? What do we present? <laughs> Are you talking about the team? Yeah. Yeah. Team is well, because that's the budget we put together, and my understanding is that the budget committee wants to see the budget that we put together. Well, you can you can do that if you want to, but I, I, I would at the same time tell them that we have not. The select board has, has not been voted not to have team camp anymore well, because of the following reason. I'm, well, I'm ex so, on the budget committee. Oh, okay. I am going to be there. So it's 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 valid to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, with all of the all the town departments have the opportunity to present whatever their original presentations were to the select board, the budget committee has the budget that the select board has now agreed upon. So I think it's also about, you know, I think it's a conversation for this group that 
knowing the select board doesn't support team camp, do you all still want to advocate for team camp? Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to advocate for it, then I think it's just worth bringing it up that this was originally allocated toward team camp. You know, here's a handout about that, but I'm not going to speak to it because we're not going to do that. Or um, this is team camp, and let me tell you more about it because even though the select board doesn't support it, this is what we were trying to do. Like, like I, I think you could go either way with it. It's just about given that the board isn't supporting it right now, do you all want to still advocate for it? But the board is supporting the entire budget that they submitted. Right. They're just saying, right. instead of team, we're doing a rec director. Right. So if you're not going to... So the money is the same. The money is the same. About, it's do you just want to how we're going to spend it. Right. And you can do your... You can present whatever you want to. It doesn't mean that if they say, okay, no, we're going to do team, you're not going to get your rec director. That's unless they increase the money by that amount. Which, right. <laughs> and I, I mean, personally speaking, I mean, I love my team camp. And mm -hmm. I would far, I, would, I think having a rec director for this town would be so beneficial. It's the start of what you need going yes. forward. Exactly. So, because, you know, things can, you know, so, you get a little bit of increasing every year will help you. The other thing is that the budget committee is new, and there are not, I don't think there are any parents of young children on it or possibly one. I don't know, but I don't think so. So, you know, it's worth, I think, bringing the handout and saying we did this program for three years and two. Or two years, okay. <laughs> it felt like three, I guess. That's <laughs> um, but just telling them that we hope to bring it back one day, but we're stepping back and, you know, give them some context because they don't have any context because. Recreation is, is the department they have probably least interaction with. And, and hopefully you'll get them through senior and, and maybe grandchildren with basketball. I don't know. But um, I, I think it's worth talking about um, you know, some context and big picture. Um, but keep that separate from what, where are we now and what, what are you asking for? So for do they year? do they have our budget that we submitted to you guys? Do they ha is that all? They don't budget? have any handouts. You, you so need to be supplying your okay. your own okay. handouts. And so if you want to yeah, email yeah. me things and send me copies, I can do that. Yeah, okay. Um, but but they don't have anything. Okay. But I, I mean, except for the bottom line that's in the they town have the bottom budget. line because they they have the, the whole rec budget. Okay. That's part of our budget. Just right? the town full yeah. budget that has those mm -hmm. lines. But they're not, not your detail, like level the other ones. I 
passionate about it, feel free to try to sell it. But you can get one or the other. I, I guarantee it. I, right. I, I could say you could say, although we, we love Team Camp, and we'd love to, at some point to see it go forward, we think after meeting and discussing it with our committee, we think those funds would better suit us as having a part-time camp director and then perhaps team camp in years to come if we're able to do that. I can see the logic of team camp serves less than 20 kids per year and Camp Raleigh serves many more and that there are other needs that the money could be used for. So I can see the benefits of putting team camp off for a couple of years. But I, like you said, I would like to see it come back mm -hmm. in the future because I think it's an asset to the community too. You can say that. So, I mean, that seems to be the consensus of the group. So you can. Yeah, I just wouldn't write well on it. Yeah. Just, yeah. just, just make your point. It. That's what it is. And, and you, you, know. you agree to, you know, with what the select board is saying about trying to get a rec director in there. And just, that's it. So, I mean, simple. <laughs> Love you, Celia. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, so let's look. Now, this is very interesting. The calendar year next year is very interesting. Um, so I wrote the potential for a seven-week session next summer. And if anybody has looked at a calendar yet, so I don't know. It, I, don't, I don't think any school start times, but... There's a one weird thing also, Labor Day weekend is really late. Um, so I don't know even what Marshwood schools are gonna do because they <coughs> always start after Labor Day, but Labor Day this year is like September 7th. Like it's, it's, it's late. The second day. Yeah. yeah. But you don't um, go that far, do you? I mean, you, you can no, start a couple but, weeks but, before Labor but Day. But my question is, so, and, and I actually, I called the summer's rec, rec director already to ask her what she was going to do. And they, weirdly enough, get out of school five days before we do, which I, I, Romsford always gets out before summer's work, so I thought that was bizarre. <coughs> but, so they get out of school June 12th, so she's starting her camp that, um, I'd have to look at it. Yeah, but we haven't even gone through winter yet, so we're not thinking about that. But, but Denise, it's really a potential because we get out of school June seventeenth, which is a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. If we oh, have so any snow days, we already had one. We had that. I don't know if even if that one includes if June seventeenth includes that. Do you know, Lori? If they've included. I think that? they have like three wrapped into the calendar. So, mm -hmm. but but yeah. we've always started that following Monday. But if we have any 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 snow days. That's going to be almost impossible to start that that next week. So the summer director was already saying, "Yeah, you probably should plan on starting the following Monday, which is like the 29th of June or something, and then we would just go seven weeks to August 14th as the last day." So it's something. Could you start like on a Wednesday? Yeah. Well, start on a Monday. I guess we don't have to. That's a good point. Um, you know, so at least you can get a few days in and then have a fresh yeah. whole week after. Well, you still like going into eight weeks. Even if that's true, the eighth week is still starting on August 17th. I would... <laughs> We're not going to start that early in Robinson. I, I, ending. Yeah, but that's... Well, I know. Something was, that, no, that would was, be ending August 21st. Uh, that's what got us into all kinds of trouble with the school last year. Okay. Okay. With and the classrooms and okay. setting them up. Though. And if we go into August 21st, you know, we get college kids that... that yeah. That oh, that's true. Could potentially be leaving, you know, at that. So I, I think we need to end on the August 14th. So the reason I bring that up and how I'm already looking about that is because we're going to have to adjust, like, salary, salary and tuition. And so it's going to be a really weird, because tuition is going to be less. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so well, that at least adjusts you down, which is a better adjustment. <laughs> I wouldn't adjust down. it now before budget. Okay. Be I mean, go in with what your budget is, okay. because that's your thought process of what it can be. Yeah. And so I wouldn't go, I wouldn't bring it down with the potential yeah, of starting, like, Yeah, I would change like, it at this point. Leave it, leave the it select board has, 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 like, made their recommendations yeah. and, and done whatever, so if it's less, it's less. Right. Um, it's just an interesting, it's just an interesting scenario that I it kind is. of came totally upon here. I was like, hmm. Uh, the it last day of school this year on, on this calendar is the 12th. 
which makes it the 15th, because we had one that already. Why did I say the 7? Well, there was no power on the school. Do you could. have to count that? I don't know. Well, you, you know, you know, they have to meet a certain you number. Of, I think they switched to hours instead of what, days. Where did I see the so they have to count I see the seventeenth on my calendar. They wrapped up into the calendar, and it's only if they went past the three that they started extending the year. Yeah, but the principal told me in the spring that they no longer built it in March. Their sister. Because somebody asked, well, don't you build it? Well, the last, yeah, some of the last. Yeah, some so the last day, it's like it, it is every day now. Okay. It's added. Look, I see your picture there. But they they did one year add a half an hour to each day that they started 15 minutes earlier. Went 15 uh, that was when well, that was when they had Yeah, that was when they had And that was a big hassle. Yeah. Or they could, what they also did was they took the teacher workshop. They took the teacher workshop days and use those as school days and then yeah. the teacher workshop days were at the end of the year. So the kids weren't going. They've done that a couple of years. Alright, all right, so that's just something on the radar that I wanted to bring up. But potentially we could just doing it one last week is what yes. you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Um so I don't know if we want to talk about schedule. We can recap our coffee. We need more. We, we need to. We did not have a, a huge number of coffeeers come. So, um, so the question is, how do we reach more people? You know, I we had four people show up. <laughs> we had. Um, I will get them out to you. Um, to write that, I guess. It's the 17th, right? But I have to say, when I talk to the Summers Road Rec Director, they're trying to do a lot with their senior program. Now they're trying to bring it back and do a, offer a lot more things. I told her that we had four at our first day, and she said, actually, that's really not bad, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> so um, a lot of them talk about the weather. Um, yeah, it was raining that day. <laughs> and people they know not driving. We didn't. Um, and it was just on social media and through posts throughout the town. We did not get the sign boards out because we did not um, hear from the school whether or not they were willing to help us. <laughs> um, I didn't have my thing with me, so I, I don't know what I wrote. <laughs> so I didn't have information about that. Um, so did you tell the board to bring two of their friends, each of them, and that would have and I did stop and talk to a couple seniors I know, and the seniors that were there, we discussed things that would bring in people and so forth. The timing is bad for a lot of people because it's during the day and some seniors work part-time. Um, uh, somebody I know told me that they know a couple people at C&J that work three days a week and Thursdays happens to be one of the days they work. Um, and then we talked about snowbirds being away and that maybe not doing it during the winter, do these three, and then go back to starting in like April, April or May mm -hmm. when people are back and the roads are not difficult to travel and maybe more of them will come then. And it also discussion about bringing in things that they would like. Um, one of the people that came was all about, he's a veteran, he'd love to see somebody from like Veterans Affairs come in and talk and bring in a bunch of the older veterans here here in town about what resources are available to them and stuff like that. And we talked about what they want to see. And so I have three pages of, three big sheets of information that they provided me with those four. And I stopped, I talked to another friend of mine who is retired and senior citizen and she does craft fairs through the holidays. She goes, you won't see me until January because I'm busy painting and crafting. And Maybe that. you should bring in a craft project. She says, I will come up if everybody swears they will paint my ornaments for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I have gotten some feedback. And the other thought I had for bringing in more people, it will miss the November meeting, but it would put us out there for October is the open studios on November 23rd and 24th is looking for community groups to go and sit 
direct people, like hand out maps and stuff, but you get to promote your group or at the tables and stuff where you can put out information. So if we could create a flyer about the senior groups, then we could put it out there and it could stay out there and as people walk in and pick up their maps, they would get information about the senior groups too. And that would just be getting copied here at the town hall or something like that. Can you, can you try to ask Allison about doing uh, something to, um, what are those things called? The signboard? Yeah. For the November 19th one. So it's next Thursday. It's the 21st. Next Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, next Thursday. Silly, yeah. um, did you have something that you put out anyway? Somewhere? Can you send that to me? And then I can give that to Allison so she can see what it looks like? And I can ask Allison's her. very creative, though. I know, but she'll have the information. <laughs> and I can just change the date. Well, it has all three dates on it. Okay. Alright. So um, we'll have two. We have two more. But yeah. So if you know anybody in town. Or like the other thing coffee. that we talked about was ride sharing. And yeah. yeah. People there. And, um, different ride shares, whether we could pick up people or not. And to me, that opens up liability and stuff. Yeah. Andrew can help you. I could go pick up people. <laughs> I don't have it. Well, I do have a bus, actually, in my other bus. But, um, in your other bus, you have two? Oh. oh, yeah, my husband's on that bus. <laughs> it's like a real bus. You have to pull the thing. Yeah, so, Lori, you were supposed to check with Rich to see if we could get him get assistance. Yeah. Or get assistance um, from his staff to allow us to make posters for the aid frame. Oh yeah, that I'm just gonna gallery. Yeah. 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 And um you were also gonna check and see if we could use the A frames at the school. Oh, yeah, we can just check that. Because um just some people that. I've seen people say that they take their grandkids to school just to get help track around the community. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hmm, so take their grandchildren up from the flag. <laughs> so tell them about yes. coffee hour on Thursday. <laughs> oh, it's Denise. <laughs> Denise yes. it's coffee hour at ten. Um How's your back? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm just going to stand there for a break. All right. All right. Well, thank please. you. Do you want my phone number so that if you have to pick her up, you can just call me? Do you don't have to get in Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, if you need anything for them, just I'm there every day. So Celia, Celia put out, and you did a lot, lot of work on this. Um, she had put out changes to the camp staff manual. So my, my whole feeling about all this with these two documents, and Celia, if you, you and I, um, Mike, I kind of assume you work, right? Uh, David, you're kind of in and out of work. Celia and I have time during the day that my suggestion is that you and I sit down and go through this because I, like as I was going starting to go through all the stuff that you had and it was 28 pages and I was like oh my god if we do this in one meeting it's and we go page by page it's gonna be five hours later right so I would rather maybe you and I sit down and go through it with a lot of these changes that we've made and then present a final document all right. how does that sound with all of you <laughs> because it was really sort of very bad. And then 
and David and I have worked together on, um, we got together on some, and if you guys could all, so this is, this is the start, or CIA might have given you sort of, so the changes that, and we haven't done a huge amount of changes, but oh, this, the this is the job. Can um, you email this to me? David. David. <laughs> <laughs> out the individual names and we've kind of just we're kind of starting to think in the direction of rec director and just and putting putting a job label to some of the things that we have in there so if if maybe that can be a homework if you think this all looks pretty good I mean we're, we're crossing out individual names and just putting committee um, you know I'm good with this we can add things to um, jobs, you know, which as we come up with them. Um, this is fabulous. Thank you. So, thank you. So we can we can continue, I think, to work on it this way. So, did this include the? Did you review what I sent out in my document? I did. We include did, that in that, or did, did you just no? Do, we updated. just right. We just updated this, so we can definitely take what you have done too and and add in. I kind of like this visual for me. Helps. I think I think sometimes with the the bullets and the listing, I just I got I got a little overwhelmed. So that's my own issue. But. <laughs> us. 
I don't know, but I could try to help. <laughs> oh, this tongue's wrong. I have a lot of ideas, but sometimes I don't know what that is. But. I have too many ideas, and I get myself in trouble. Okay. <laughs> Ideas are good, you know. We we started this program with ideas, you know. So it all starts. Everything starts with ideas. Mm -hmm. So we don't know if we can, you know. Um, it's a really great time to be a part of this committee because everything needs to get not everything, but there's so much to create, and and you know, creative language and nitpicking language is is really helpful. Planning is really helpful. Um, but there's no shortage of the need for ideas for how to do things better, especially if you're familiar with policy and the need for policy and what policy kind of is there for and all that stuff. You know, Caroline loved you. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was like, you know, like you, you almost could not have said a better thing for me from my perspective. But, well, I'm you know. happy to help with it. <laughs> Sometimes speaking in public, I'm not great at, so uh, but I'm a little bit more work on behind the scenes stuff that. That's good. I will speak in public. All right. There we go. <laughs> See, that's what's great about a committee. There's somebody for like everything that needs to happen. That's really great. That's really good. Thank you for that. Yeah. All right. So, what assignment can we give you for next time? Well, he can review the handbooks too. Yeah. Well, but not until after you do. So maybe, maybe yeah. that's the process: is that you two do what you know needs to happen, and then once you two come up with the final draft. We can hand it he over. reviews it before the committee does because he can just put a different set of outside eyes with policy background on it. I think that would be useful to the committee before the rest of we all. Okay. How do you feel about yeah. that? Yeah, I'm all about stream streamlining language. You usually take a paragraph, cut it down into a couple sentences. Oh, it's like so it's it's <laughs> <laughs> Still, you add sentences. You do. It's not better, it's just shorter and people like to read less. Oh, I don't so, want to read anything yeah. long, but I have to write things. <laughs> <laughs> I have a problem when I write things when I'm editing other people's work, so it's, it is okay. it's easier for me to cut things out of my own. I add what you add, so Oops. I know what you're saying. Yeah. All right, so we tabled, we tabled these two things for myself and Celia. Um, And then where we also can table, I would I would like to to have that staff discussion for our next meeting. I think we'll be running into that coming up shortly. Maybe. Uh, the only thing I have is that Rich reminded me to remind everybody that we said we would talk to him in January about the building of the need. Mm. Which see that's interesting with your calendar. <laughs> so it sounds like you need to know, like our calendar only goes till June. Right. So then it, I I swap calendar, but it doesn't help like that because we have a whole that day. So it um, <laughs> that may be approved by then. The the, the next, next calendar, calendar year. Yeah. So he would know by you know. I mean, I would. So. There's no major. Events going on in school this right. summer. So oh, okay. We know of, you know, gym floor's not being refinished. Yes. <laughs> that that that's um, You know, it's just a unloading and reloading, cleaning of rooms. Right. There's no special. There's no. There's no floor stairs put in. And we can we set another meeting and we can talk yes. about schedule too, because we need to talk about getting. What grants we want to get yes. written and getting them done in January and February. Yes. So that we know come um, our busy time what money we have and we're not racing yes. around. Well, and that's a really good point because it's not just grant writing, but what, what other items are really time sensitive for around now. We, you know, we need to keep our eye on the calendar and what needs to get done by a certain time in order that we stay on track in the big picture, but that we don't miss things like that. So, um, you know, that's within job descriptions, but until we have job descriptions fully written out, 
you know, the time, you know, the calendar is clicking by and we could be missing things. So we just need to be mindful of that. So I started this, and I don't know if you want to do this. I, I've, been bra I've been brainstorming. David and I kind of showed that to David. So um, if there are edits on this, yeah. do we send them to David? Yeah. Okay. Um, can you email me this? Yes, I can email what I wrote that on. That's what I do that on. I just kind of did a Word document, I think. So. Sure. Because, you know. That's my start. So that's kind well, of like what so I'm starting to think. But, but keep in mind that there is an approved job description for the rec director as the camp rec director. Right. And then when you talk about the town rec director, if that is also the, the, the um, camp rec director, then you can take that job description and just amend it rather than recreate it. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we need to create a new one. It is important to think about these things that you're thinking about, about you know, all these items that are falling outside of the <coughs> summer. Um, but since, you know, it, but if it's going to be the same person, then we shouldn't neglect all those other things that are already in that job description, I guess is what I'm saying. So you can just combine them and have one. Okay. What do you think about that? I think that is good, too. Yeah. It's just so, and, and that, that's why I kind of wanted to talk about staffing because um, I have approached somebody just curious wise at the school who works there um, and if this was an opportunity then you know I asked about not being working in the summer versus so what Celia like we kind of talked about overseeing versus like the dual hats right and that person, I think you guys all know what I'm talking about. Um, she's like, well, I would rather be, I would rather work all summer. That's, I, I love doing that part. So that was kind of an interesting thought for the job role that kind of fell into, like, oh, well, maybe that's the way it should be. You know? I just, seeing other communities and talk to people, like, um, I know North Berwick. They have a director that does all the other duties and oversees the summer camp, then hires somebody. Right. But if they're short staffed or somebody calls in sick or something like that, they fill in right. for that staff member. But I don't think we can do that yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what um, okay, my been. idea comes from. And like, I think they do the same thing in South Berwick. I was just saying. Yeah, they do the same thing in Somerville. Also have, you know, they got their rec director who's in charge of everything. And, and then they have assistant rec director, um, and then they have and like they, the, they have the a whole bunch stuff. of people. And they have a whole department that's funded by their tax base, yeah, which we yeah. don't currently have. Right. So I right. can see the yeah. professional staff. So yeah, we yeah. have to so we have to kind of make it fit to our little our little pool here. So um, oh we were looking at a schedule. Um, I don't know. How many weeks are we talking about here? So in two weeks, it's it's Thanksgiving, so that's out. <laughs> well, unless, is that whole week out? I don't know, um, like, is Tuesday out that week? The 26th? Yeah, yeah that's a tough day. That's a teacher workshop day at the school, right? You know, the regular school day. Monday is. Monday is the teacher workshop. Yeah. Well, it's student work conference. Yeah. Oh, no, there's no school on the 27th, and that's no school, no school. Oh, that's why we got it. Okay, so the, fo the first week of December is mm -hmm. fine. I have, um, I might have to move somebody, but. Um, um, not Tuesday, if you would, though, if you're going to do that. What about Thursday? Thursday is going to be a calendar, 5th, July, uh, December 5th. I think you have to have one right now, Rebecca. Okay. And then you can get back to I will get me back on to that. I'll get back to you until I get back to that. Okay. So why don't we put in our tentative next meeting for the 5th, Thursday the 5th? Um, and then. Um, do you want to 
check that with Kelly B and mm -hmm. see if it works. She said Monday or Thursday was good. Yeah, she preferred that. Yeah. And that's actually better for me too because boy scouts meets on Tuesday and I don't have to figure out which Tuesday my boy scout meeting. I think six or six thirty. Does anybody care six or six thirty? I mean, yeah, I mean, I just five thirty, but that could you know that could go later. Mm -hmm. Is basketball going to have team going? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to ask Ryan how many kids were there today. We had like um, we had a bunch of girls show up last week, which was awesome. Um, so maybe the younger kids there weren't so many, but um, we've been getting like seven to nine of the fifth, sixth graders. I think I'm sitting in the classroom. I don't know. Well, I go I go into the classroom on on, on Thursdays now. Now I'm volunteering on like Thursdays. Do math, and I'm like, "Are you coming to open gym tonight?" <laughs> I can't wait to pass this course. <laughs> so at six or six thirty. So let's say can, if we can say six thirty, I'd rather six thirty because if they're, the idea is if our basketball will start and that will be at six o'clock, so that at least gives you a little leeway. All right, how's that, Mike? Good. Do you want this back? Out. Yes, because I have to okay. make sure. Well, I prefer it electronic. Yes, I will give that electronic. All right. Um, motion, motion to adjourn. Can I call that? <laughs> What's the time? Eight twenty-five. Are we adjourning tonight, Princess? No. Sure. That means we're all in agreement. <laughs>